The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, some Pharisees came up and in order to test Jesus, asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away. And Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. And in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another, commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him, that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me, do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends in Jesus Christ, today, the 27th Sunday, we had been reflecting, if you can remember, uh, the last few weeks, how the Hodos, if you can remember, how Jesus took them to pagan lands and he was teaching them about the true discipleship. What we have to give up the cost of discipleship by drawing his own suffering. He was teaching about his own suffering, yet they did not understand it. That's why Peter rebuked Jesus and said, you should not die like that. And then and James and John, they, they, wanted, to be, they wanted to be in the either side of the Lord and they, they, were, they were fighting about the leader who is superior of them all on the way while Jesus was teaching them about the suffering, my dear friends. So in this, in this background, today the Lord is teaching them about the marriage. So St. Mark beautifully bringing forth this issue of marriage by with this question of the Pharisee where they were trying to test the Lord. Of course, this is part of his suffering, suffering and death on the cross. They were trying to find a fault with the Lord so that they could put him into death. So they were like roaring lions, roaring, devour, trying to find a moment, a loophole in the life of the Lord. Yet Jesus making every mess a message, every loophole an opportunity, he uses this moment to teach them the gravity, the, the glory, the profoundness of the marital union, my dear friends. So it's, the question was, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? So this divorce is only with the, with the male party, only with the man. So women cannot divorce, isn't it? Only one school that time, uh, school taught about taught where even women can apply for divorce when there are few, few circumstances in the marriage. 
where the husband can be torturing the wife in that particular group only. Otherwise, women are highly discriminated. So to, so to speak, where the, the bridegroom had to, bridegroom's father used to pay, a, pay some money for the bride's father. So in a, in a way, he, the, it denotes that they purchased the wife. So rights of women were curtailed in that time, my dear friends. So it's a male-dominant society where they were, they were highly uh, discriminated women. And uh, if you know the structure of the temple, the Holy of Holies, the most, the, tab the tabernacle was there. And the holy place, only priests could go there. And then we find the place only men can enter. And only, then only women and children go, can come. And finally, the pagans do come and worship. So there the church is segmented, the temple is segmented, even to the, the, in the gradation of the importance, my dear friends. So that's exactly the background when they came, and came, came to Jesus and said, what, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? My dear friends, in, if you read Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1 to 5, we find there is a law regarding divorce. A man can divorce his wife. Of course, there were two schools, Hillel and Shammai. There were two rabbinic schools that time, where this is, if you, if, you, if you read about them, you will be dumbfounded to see, my dear friends, in Hillel's school, they can divorce the wife if she cannot cook properly. This can be good news for the husband nowadays. Most of the wife, they can't uh, cook properly, isn't it? <laughs> That's it's exactly, then the, and they can, they, can, they can divorce a wife, according to that Hillel school, if the wife speaks to a strange man. And he, he, she's not capable of doing the whole homework, work properly. They can simply divorce the wife. And where the Shammai school, they can divorce the wife only if, if she commits adultery. My dear friends, but then in, in, in Matthew's gospel, we find they attribute this Shammai school to the Lord, to Jesus. But then the, when answering the question, this is a background, this, this can be a little boring, yet you have to understand the background if you want to go to the depth of the mes message. Because there is no context, there is no text without a context. So in this background only, they come to the Lord and ask whether, we have, whether a man can divorce the wife. Exactly, they knew they can divorce according to the Mosaic law. And if you go to, this is Mark's 10th uh, tenth, tenth chapter, if you go to the 6th chapter, we find John the Baptist is rebuking, uh, is complaining and uh, alleging against Herod. Because he married Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. So he was killed, isn't it? He was murdered because of this, because of this complaint. So they were in a way planning, if the Lord is speaking of, against divorce and remarrying, they can provoke people, some people to kill him. And also, that's exactly why they, this is a trap. They were trusting the Lord. It is a, the exact Hebrew word is a trap, my dear friends. But then the Lord is using this very trap to teach them the importance of marriage. Oh. Marriage is a divine, divine plan. Marriage is a divine plan where God is uniting them. The Lord is asking them, what did Moses command you? Of course, according to Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 24, they can divorce their wives. But then the Lord is saying, they said Moses allowed the man to write a certificate of divorce and then send, to send her away. And Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made male and female. 
so god the lord is going beyond moses to the very creation we are the lord is taking the very gist of marriage cream of marriage my dear friends see we if you read the god gen book of genesis you find two genesis two two creation stories if you don't know the background you will be puzzled how come god is creating in two ways he's creating with adam and eve with mud and he is creating adam and eve with a uh, man and woman with a word so what is right it's not a historical book there's a theological message you have to understand where the lord is saying the lord is clearly saying that marriage is designed by god marriage is designed by him what god has created he creates man in the first in the first uh, gen uh, first creation story we find my dear friends he creates everyone the whole universe and he creates sun and moon he creates the earth and all the animals and last but not least he creates man and woman where he says that is the most important creation in the creation man and woman they were created in the image and likeness of god they were created in the image and likeness of god they created man and women man and woman so it's a it's a conjugal union man and woman nowadays lot of people do speak about homosexual marriages some homosexual marriages in some come some countries it is legalized this is complete against the biblical theology my dear friends of course we can have physical deformities defects psychological crooked broken areas there can be genetical imbalances their hormones are hormones are not balanced but then it does not mean that god will bless such kind of unions those are man made man made unions my dear friends but in human in creating man in the first creation story he creates man and woman separately so they can come together spiritually emotionally sexually and they be, they both become one and god has blessed them blessed them as a family and in the second story we find he creates adam only man the man and woman they are not created together the second story is different but then the importance is the same he creates man and he brings each and every animal to the man adam adam we call adam in hebrew and he names them all biblically my dear friends to do, to name someone is to have authority over the person so G, the lord is giving the man authority over the creation so he named every every each and every animal these are all symbolical but then he could not find a person he he could not find a person in the creation adam there was not adam there was not found a helper fit for him in all the animals some people love their dogs than their children they they uh, they they kill their children fetuses infants abort them and they have their dogs with them this is completely wrong sometimes they make their pets their partners so they they will have their life with them without rejecting all the relationships their families this is wrong you cannot you cannot of course you can love your pet it's okay it's a nice thing you can have them you can love them but then not the way you love a human being they are not human beings 
you have to have this in your mind you cannot take them into the level of a person person will have the image of god image and likeness of god we cannot baptize animal of course we can bless animals in the ritual we have the blessings for uh, for poultry for dogs and everything if you, you if you want to know properly we cannot baptize them there the stories tell there were church was you know trouble with pigeons lot of pigeons and they were dirtying the place and uh, father parish priest had a problem with the pigeons and uh, one of the ideas uh, given by the parish council to baptize the pigeons then father asked what what would happen after baptizing the baptizing the pigeons they would not come to the church come for mass <laughs> after baptizing them this would be one of the good remedies they said this is church humor but then you cannot you cannot no when adam there was no for adam there was not found a helper fit for him then the, the way he created eve the lord god caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and while he was asleep while he slept took one of his ribs this is exactly why you have to know the bible a deep sleep is in hebrew is tardema tardema is not just sleep my dear friends it's spiritual ecstasy it's spiritual ecstasy god puts man man into a spiritual ecstasy in a spiritually a state where he is not he is completely floating in a spiritual you come to a level where you are not conscious of what is happening it's a higher level of spirituality and then he took a rib from the man and created an eve my dear friends what is the meaning the theological meaning of this creation the he was he took a rib he could have taken a piece of the skull isn't it or oh, he could have taken a piece of uh, toes in the, in the in the feet my dear my dear friends no but then rib a place close to the heart a rib that is uh, the bone closest to the heart and lungs for that matter heart denotes love lungs represents life she becomes part of his love and life this is a symbol of rib my dear friends he took a rib and created eve one day again this is church humor where adam uh, got late to come to come home after work and he was little suspicious of adam and he wanted to know whether uh, he had another relationship you know <laughs> after coming home uh, she he uh, pulled him down and got in got him got into his body and counted all the ribs to check only one whether only one rib is missing then she is sure she was sure that no women woman involved so every the whole pack is there but then the rib means that one who is close to your heart close to your life love and life and they become one my dear friends so think theologically think logically it was it was only man and from man he was woman was created so they were one earlier they were one earlier and they were separated with a purpose spiritually they were one and they were given two bodies they became two physically so in marriage they become one again this is a heavenly design my dear friends this is a heavenly design this is a heavenly plan that's exactly why the lord is saying what is marriages are done in heaven not in this world so what god has united man must not divide you cannot separate each other but then the world 
is such divorce is a common topic we have the marital tribunal where catholics lot of catholics families are broken the covenantal bond is not more the cordial covenantal bond is tarnished it has become a sacrilege my dear friends when we when it comes to a sacrament god will unite you joins you husband wife only you see both of you but then it's a it's a covenantal relationship where in the past god god was the bridegroom and israelites people of israel they were the bride god became the husband and they were the wife that's exactly why prophet hosea was asked to marry a harlot a prostitute and he had a terrible time with her she had been on and off unfaithful again and again hosea hosea had to forgive her and bring her back again and it was a torture terrible experience and the lord said hosea i am going through the same thing with my people idolatry idolatry is like adultery idolatry where you worship other pagan gods you become unfaithful to him so this bride this wife israelites they were again and again becoming unfaithful to everyone aren't you faithful to the lord and god had to forgive him forgive the people god could have easily write a certificate and divorce them god never did that he is the god he is the lord who is never changing he is never changing he is unchanging rock he is unchanging changer he was unchanging by changing the wife he is of his faithful even though we are unfaithful he is the unmoving unmoving mover he moves the people to love him he, he never moved himself he is certain his love is perpetual even the sky can fade earth can shake his love will never fade isaiah 54 verse 10 that's how he loved us that's exactly how that marital bond was strong so he never wishes a divorce he never he never wish a divorce that's why in our catholic church we don't have divorces we only have annulments so you can ask me father there are many people who got divorced in the church and got remarried also so you have to know the church teaching to become a complete marriage you have to have two two components where the the couple should have their consent and conjugal union consent is their will the will of each other it it has, it should be a it, it should be a healthy consent if you cheat someone if you lie the consent is not fulfilled and also a conjugal union which means they should come together sexually a natural sexual act so if both these components are complete the marriage is complete so then if then none can separate what god has joined what god has united this is exactly why jesus went to genesis and said no one can divorce no one can divorce catholic church will stand on this our foundation for for the teaching of marriage is the word of god no one can divorce there is no divorce in the church my dear friends it's important to know the way he loves you it's the way jesus loves you the way jesus loved the church paul in theology we find in paul in theology how then paul connects the church as the bride christ the bridegroom we find in jesus's parable 10 the 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 
the friends of the bride they came with ten lanterns stewards came with ten lanterns and bridegroom bridegroom was jesus and he is the bridegroom in loving his wife he had to go through terrible pain isn't it he went to garden of gethsemane and said father if possible take this cup away from me it is difficult if possible take this pain away from me it's difficult to love this wife it's hard they are so unfaithful so torturing but then the he, he got strength from above to love the bride the church that's you and me my dear friends so it's not easy to say yes to the lord you know if you don't if you can't bear the stink smell of the sheep you can't be a shepherd that's exactly why you need power from above to bear this cross to say a complete yes you have to draw the power from above in luke chapter 22 verse 43 onwards we find an angel of the lord descended from heaven and strengthened jesus in gethsemane to live in that yes it's not easy marriage is a is a difficult life my dear friends but then it's it's important that you have a personal relationship with the lord you have to love jesus more than your wife and husband that relationship should be strongly strongly united you have to bring bring to him you have to tell him everything what a friend we have in jesus that we have to let pour our heart out completely share everything all the difficulties you know because you cannot sometimes the rejection the reaction from your spouse because they all are broken it's not to throw her or him away you have given yes to the lord not you know to the lord and you have to live by that yes because we are accountable to the lord my dear friends you have to remember you your marriage in your marriage you become one in a sacrament so because we want a mass a, a priest is involved in your sacrament otherwise in marriage only in marriage we don't want a, a priest is not a must you can have your marital bond without a priest because you become the spot you become the sacrament with jesus we, you need a priest only to say mass and to bless with your consent with your conjugal union of course in it is nicely designed in the church in the clerical the in the church circle you have a mass and beautiful blessing there and we have church law involved there you have to be form fill your pnis and all the things in the church regulations to support you to support your marriage only but then it happens between you two you two in good times in bad times to love you to be faithful to you to respect you because in between the lord is there the lord is there i'm speaking to the couples who don't have children they can be barren my dear friends remember you don't want to have children to complete your marriage no your marriage is complete when you love each other it's a covenant but then you can be blessed with children you can pray still you can pray for a child but then if you are given children of course it is a blessing and also it is a responsibility it is a responsibility the way you bring up them the lord is saying let the children come to me do not hinder them do not stop them the parents wanted in the gospel today parents wanted the ch- their children to be blessed by jesus 
they wanted jesus to touch them this is the best remedy that you can think about your child the world is so broken the world is so 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 broken my dear friends polluted i mean they the, the children the background they have to live is terrible only solution only remedy you put your full effort to take the children to the lord let him let him touch your child it's not you so create a prayerful atmosphere always create a prayerful atmosphere catholics you be faithful to the rosary where mother mary think about the wine in the marriage the spirit in the marriage and bring the problem to the lord in the due in the proper time my dear friends so let him touch your children it's important the lord is saying in that society children are not important they were nobodies even they were like women of course but then the lord is giving a prominent place especially in mark's gospel in matthew and luke we find the same incident but jesus just blessed them jesus just took them in middle of them yet here he embraces them children they have the right to do this your child is precious your child is precious people the society the system the media can stop your child from give, going to the lord be aware of them and always give your child the lord the proper atmosphere pro- pro- proper infrastructure the background to experience the lord that's the best that you can do to your child my dear friends finally he loves you so much He has designed your plan and planned your marriage. You are blessed with His blessing. You can be broken. You can, you have, we have gone away from that union. You have fallen. You have become unfaithful. You are frustrated. You are done with your marriage. And it's a terrible moment, terrible pain that you are going through. But the Lord is saying today, But the Lord is saying today, I have planned this. I will love you. I will be with you. Stay connected strongly. Go to him. Be like a child. Go to him. Let him bless your marriage strongly, profoundly, my dear friends. Amen. Amen.